David from Berlin, Germany. Uh, welcome to my talk. Thank you for coming. Uh, so today I would like to talk to you about um, state of Scala API and Apache Flink. Are there anybody here who is developing Flink applications? Can you raise your hand? Or uh, also using Scala maybe? Apart from Flink? Okay, not that much. Okay, anyway, so I think it will be interesting for you just to also know about the Scala. Um, let me switch that. Ah, okay, so it should be done. So uh, the agenda of the talk is, uh, so why would you use Scala in general as a language? Um, it's a probably good, good part because one of you or very few of you are using Scala in, today. And uh, yeah, how it's used in Apache Flink, I'll show you, uh, describe. So what's the uh, uh, Flink Scala API in the Flink itself? And also, um, which tools Scala provides to work with the Flink deploy development and deployment. Okay. So let's start then. Um, so Scala itself is quite mature programming language with uh, maybe 15 years old uh, history. And has quite a big ecosystem of tools. Um, the line of code is just an example of very primitive program of Hello World, just online. That's all you need to, to run between the statement and the console. So it's quite uh, an expressive and concise uh, language in terms of the syntax, syntax. It compiles to different targets, to JVM, JavaScript, native code as well. And Apache projects like Apache Spark, Flink, uh, Apache Kafka, and Akka. There's also a way a uh, fork of Akka library, which is Scala-based. Uh, in Apache world, and called Peko. So all of them are using Scala. Um, the Scala tools, the Scala ecosystem has quite good uh, uh, editors uh, support for the IDEs. Uh, so two prominent ones uh, are plugin called Metals for VS Code, Visual Studio Code Editor, and for IntelliJ there is a, a long history plugin called so such called Scala plugin, where you can develop very pleasantly Scala applications. So Scala itself has also the REPL, where you can evaluate statements line by line. Uh, it also has a CLI, which you can package, compile the code, um, do many things. So it's quite a unique tool uh, in terms of the programming language. Uh, has quite mature two build tools, SBT and MIL. Uh, lots of libraries, frameworks for HTTP, for concurrency, for big data, for data processing. And there's also a website where you can uh, search for uh, libraries specifically for Scala. It's called Scala Index. Uh, also, if you're interested to learn, I would recommend you several books that I also read myself uh, on Scala. Just quite a fundamental one, so if you could be I really recommend these books, especially the red one, which is about the functional programming, which uh, changing the mindset or paradigm if you get used to developing in C Sharp or Java using object-oriented paradigm. The FP1 in Scala is really pleasant to, to program in. So, uh, how Scala is used in the Apache Flink? Uh, first, uh, uh, let's look at the history. Um, so, Flink itself uh, has the Scala API and it's using um, the some version of Scala, which is quite old. So in, in Java world, we have this Java 8, Java 11, and on and on. And that was not that fast, right? So after maybe Java 8, they started to produce frequent releases. In Scala, it was from the very beginning. The every new release, every two years, so many features, so many breaking changes. But that led to many frameworks to stuck on a specific version. And then when they want to like migrate to something like Scala 2.14, that's a lot of work. That happened to Flink as well, and Flink today is still on the version which is released in 2016, the Scala version itself. But the API is, is published every, every Flink version. And you see that Scala 2.13 is uh, from 2019, and the latest Scala release to 2021, two years ago. Uh, so most of the Scala developers, most uh, they want to use either 2.13 or 2.30 version of Scala. 
But uh, when they come to Flink, they are a bit frustrated because the native Scala API uh, Apache Flink project is still at 2.12, and they are not really um, backward compatible. So you can't really compile the code if you start to use, write new code user code in Scala 3, but Flink on the 2.12, it will fail in runtime with some weird errors. Um, yeah, so it's a bit pity also as well that um, somebody tried to, from community, to uh, migrate Flink to the 2.13, uh, but a little bit uh, was not enough to approve that pull request, and it stuck basically. And uh, when it would be happening uh, to 2.13, then 2.13 and, and 3.0, they are already interchangeable. You can use libraries from one version to another. So it was a bit, a bit of unluck, and the current Link, Apache Flink is still on the 2.12. So how it looks inside, or why that's, that's happened? What's the issue, actually? So if you write the Flink Scala job um, in your user uh, space, uh, you depend on the Flink Scala API, which is called data stream, usually. And you depend either on Scala or Java API. There are two flavors of that. And in before Flink uh, 1.15, uh, Flink itself also depended on the Scala internally. So it has to be always, it must be there on your class pass, on your runtime. But that was a problem if you wanted to use, for example, Scala 2.14 or Scala 3. In your space, it will not work. So that switch wasn't possible. And after the uh, Flink um, 1.15, so before that it was not possible, but after the 1.15, uh, Scala was shaded inside of Splink, uh, Flink and also some modules even were written to Java. To, uh, one of the reasons the lack of maintainers of Scala and in the Apache Flink community specifically. And that was the deci decision just to kind of ease or hide Scala internally for the, for the good. So for, to unlock Scala users to use uh, any Scala version via Java. So the trick is that uh, Scala and Java have interop and then they can, can call each other. So that's the trick that they applied. So basically, from this release, now you can use just Scala API, uh, sorry, Java API from Scala API, and that will work uh, without a problem. Uh, so to summarize what happened since, since Flink 115, uh, that uh, Scala was shaded and it's no longer clashes with the user based Scala library, standard library. Uh, now you can use it uh, just uh, from the Flink distributed. You would remove the Scala jar. So if you download Flink distribution and then you deploy it to some cluster, you would need to remove package Scala. It is still also there for 2.12. So it's not yet removed completely. But uh, yeah, in order to use newer version, you would for now remove from the distribution and then everything works fine. Then you would write Scala Flink job, for example, in Scala 3 like this like on the example, and it will work. The only downside of uh, using Java API directly is that you would need to provide your serializers. If you used uh, Flink, you know that it allows you to construct data stream with the, your types, and this type then serialized and sent over the wire. And uh, yeah, this Flink doesn't really know how to serialize your type. We can do that for Pojo types, but for some Scala types, you need to specify serializers, just additional code. Um, decision that was made for that to, to uh, that I just described the history, that, so the summary once again, uh, migration to Scala 13 was not really possible, so it failed in that link. Jira ticket, you can see the history. And uh, yeah, solution was basically a plan B. Okay, let's then hide Scala internally and let the users to use uh, Java API from Scala itself, and then it will allow you to use new version of Scala. Um, the downside of this de decision that you need to now write your serialization uh, uh, codex manually. Before that, or native Scala API, they are uh, provided by the Apache Flink Scala API. So they are they are for the older version, but no, there are no for new version. So that's the downside. Uh, also, yeah, the old Scala APIs uh, will be deprecated in the new version of Play. Uh, the documentation will be removed gradually. Uh, it's still there. I think it will take some time. Uh, and that's that's the decision. 
So uh, you may see, uh, think that it's a quite pessimistic or maybe a sad story, but actually, yeah, since we already just discussed that you now can use new version, um, but there's some downside that you need to provide CLR, serialization codex. So what, what's the, uh, our solution here? How to also ease this part? Um, so let's first maybe look at the standard Scala API that is still there in Apache Flame for Scala 12. Oh, it's the uh, latest link release, or one of the latest ones, 17. So the Scala API looks like this. So you define a standard wrapper on the main application of Scala, and then you use different combinative functions like flat map, map, group by. They all understand Scala tuples, so case classes, and that works similar like in Java, but the syntax is a little bit different, and it's also a bit shorter. Um, in order to not write yourself this serialization codex, um, there are two options on the open source right now, uh, which are not part of the Apache project, but they are on GitHub. So the first one is called Flink Scala API, as part of the Flink extended organization, and it supports all the Scala version, basically. And one more Flink 4S, uh, which supports Scala 3. So you can use one of them, and you don't have this problem of writing serialization code to yourself. So basically, that uh, would be the same experience as the Scala API comes from the Apache Flink. But it's still, yeah, it's maybe one of these two will eventually be ported to Apache Flink project, but so far it's uh, early days for this API specifically. A third option, you can, yeah, do not use that and continue using Java from Scala, but write your serialization codex manual, which is not, sometimes not really a problem. Uh, I personally maintain this library, Flink Scala API, Flink Extended, and in order to use it, uh, you would uh, take this uh, uh, artifact into your uh, uh, build system, Maven, or SBT, or whatever you, you're using, and the change in terms of the imports would be just very simple. So the standard original API import in the Apache Flink project has this one line streaming API Scala underscore and imports everything into your um, file. With the another newer API, there are two separate imports, one for uh, syntax, for functions, and another for codecs, for facilitation. So it's very uh, easy to migrate from the uh, older one to the newer, which support the new Scala version. And this is the example very similar to what you've seen with the Scala API for 2.12. This one is for uh, Scala 3. So you can recognize the special main annotation that just needed to make any function to be as a main program. And then it just simply works as well with the Scala 3. Uh, also, this library automatically uh, derives the uh, codecs, the serializers, for your type. For example, you have a case class foo, and, it, and then you map the over this element, a foo class in your data stream down below. Like you, you call the int method, method or something like this. And every time uh, Flink does this map, you know that it does it concurrently in distributed fashion. So the lambdas are then serialized and sent over the wire, and that's where the codec is needed for serialization. Uh, in order to a bit optimize the compile time, you can cache this um, codec, this type information variable, assi assign it or keep it once, and then every time these combinators are called, they will use one, um, the same instance of the type information. This is just to optimize compile time. You can also remove this line, it will work as well. Just only the, every time you uh, meet this case class type, it will compile time will generate new instance. So under the code, you don't really see that, but for somebody who cares about compile time, that also may help. So main features of this library is basically the power of Scala, so automatic compile time duration of link serializers uh, for Scala and for complex types. So there is no uh, Java reflection at all. So you don't really pay the price of Java reflection runtime if you're using Java API. So that's the, perhaps the biggest benefit of using Scala in general, uh, and for Flink as well. 
Uh, there's no sign fallback to cryo-serialization. Uh, there will be compiler, so you don't need to run your job to know if your types are inefficiently serialized. You will get a compiler error. Again, this is thanks to Scala compile time macros, which are natively supported by Scala itself. Uh, it's easy to migrate. As you've seen, there are similar imports from the or compared to original uh, Scala API, and it supports Scala 3. Okay, so that was the how you can use new Scala version to play with Link. And just a little bit about the um, Scala tools, which are available for any Scala application, but I collected a few for Flink development, and I think they will be interested for you. The first one is actually the plugin for to build tool SBT. So SBT is a build tool for Scala, similar to Maven, a plugin called Assembly. Um, in order to add a plugin to your project, you just add that one line to your plugin's SBT file, and then you have a special task in your SBT console called Assembly. And when you type assembly, it will build a jar file, which uh, would be a fed jar, or uber jar. It's basically the jar that contains all the libraries inside. Uh, optional, you can define or can say what class is my main class in the, my jar file, if you have many of them. Another tool called Scala, AP, uh, Scala CLI, which allows to do a lot of things. But one of the uh, cool feature of it that you can um, write a script in Scala and with one command compile into a jar file. And why it's useful for Flink, um, you might need to define uh, user defined functions for Flink SQL. And uh, this uh, define, user defined function usually some short piece of code, but it has this some um, wrapper around like Scalar function extension or any other type from Flink. So if you want to have some function, use the find function, just uh, put the code into a file and then call one command and then you have a jar file as an output. No need to set up any project, no need to open IntelliJ idea, just maybe you can use WIM, a shell, paste the, the text, write some code if you know by memory, and you'll get jar file. So Scala CI is very powerful and I use it uh, quite frequently during the work. Another tool is called uh, Ammonite. So Ammonite uh, has uh, a couple of tools inside, and one of them is the REPL, where you can evaluate piece of code line by line and see the result immediately. So for Flink, what does it mean? Uh, we can debug some short Flink job program. We can paste uh, one line of uh, Flink job uh, code definition. If you define data stream, for example, uh, this line where you see, you see the uh, REST5, this is something like an output of the execution of this line, and eventually you paste all your lines of your code, and gradually you see the results. If someone is familiar with uh, maybe more with the Jupyter Notebook or Apache Zeppelin, this is quite similar if you don't really know it all with REPL, so that you may think of the notebooks which are popular for data scientists. That's, that's the tool. Uh, also, I use it quite frequently to debug or just quickly uh, see what do I get of the intermediate result. And actually, uh, Scala also has its own kernel for Jupyter Notebook. Um, similar experience, sort of console shell REPL you would have in uh, a web browser, where you would also evaluate every piece of code line by line or chunk by chunk. So you will also see immediately after execution every block intermediate result. So it depends on what that piece of code is doing. And uh, one more, the last tool is the, again, SBT uh, build tool, but it also uh, allows you to ramp up a project from the template. So if you need to start tomorrow or anytime new Flink job, uh, I prepared for you uh, uh, Flink job template, a project template, which is has this name, my name, and slash Flink, Flink Scala API. Uh, so SBT has a command new, SBT new, then when you type that, uh, there will be a couple of prompts, questions, like how do you wanna uh, name your project, which version of Flink do you wanna use, and when you pre uh, press enter, it will generate the files in uh, such a way like you see here on the file. So it will be SBT project, first of all, 
And SBT project contains the source folder, uh, it contains the build file, which is called build SBT, and some build properties to configure the SBT itself, like version, for example. Yeah, so you can start very quickly to use Flink uh, Scala first of all, but also this template away switching by default uh, Scala 3. So you can try very quickly to, to see how it works. And I think that's it from my side, uh, a summary of all the talk. Uh, yeah, so the good news is that you can use newer version of Scala with Flink. There are even two options today. Uh, Scala itself has lots of support nowadays. It's much better than 10 years ago or seven years ago when I started with Scala. It was maybe only Scala plugin IntelliJ, but fewer those other tools. Um, large code base in Scala remain maintainable, unlike in Java. That basically uh, itself the Scala strength that if you have large fling jobs or big monorepo mono of many jobs, you will see that if you start writing this language, the code base will be much smaller. Uh, if you follow functional programming, that you will also see that's quite uh, natural for Fling or, or Apache Spark. They also both are um, uh, having this paradigm of map, flat map, function, filter, where you basically compose different combinators. That's all part of the functional programming. And yeah, just encourage you to try next time if you write Fling with the Flink Scala API. If you want to learn more about Scala, just Google or use Baidu, I believe, locally, Scala link or And I think that's it from my side. Thank you. Yeah. Any questions? going to be removed, what will be changed, right, for users? Yes. Okay. Yeah, good question. Um, a little bit touched that about uh, this fact at the very beginning. Um, yeah, the idea currently that um, the PMCs and the, the, the community drivers of Flink decided to to minimize Scala code base inside of Flink. And the main reason because the lack of maintainers, specifically for Scala. So I could maintain some part, but it's not enough. So we have much more Java developers. Uh, but even if they remove it, you can still use uh, Java API from Scala. So it would be like I showed in examples. So you would still call Java API the same classes, but you would write them, you would call them from your Scala uh, code base. And, and the benefit of that basically is Scala syntax. So you would have shorter uh, programs in general. Um, I, I don't think it will affect you that it will remove the only maybe um, issue, but also like semi, if the documentation, the Scala examples will be removed. So maybe you'll be a little bit lost if you don't know Scala. But if you already know some Scala and you know good Java API, uh, then it's not even a problem. So even like language like Kotlin, you could also call Java API from Kotlin. So that would be similar. Yep, you're welcome.